in London for Europe's premier high-stakes cash game. Tonight, eight of the world's best will sit down with at least $100,000 of their own money in this no-limit Texas Hold'em poker game. I love playing in big games. The most exciting part about any cash game is the amount of money you can win. The chance to, you know, to show your skills that really matter is to be a winning poker player. And with one of the strongest fields ever assembled, our stellar lineup are under pressure to perform in this, Europe's biggest televised cash game. The reason why I want to play against these guys is because they are the best in the world. I'm not intimidated by nobody at the table. Nobody intimidates me. I feel like I have something to show them. It's just the nature of my blood. I don't think you're going to ever find that tougher lineup. This is the FullTiltPoker.com Million Dollar Cash Game. Originally from Helsinki, Finland, and known by most in the poker world as Zygmunt, it's Ilari Sahamis. From Toronto, Canada, with nearly $2 million in live tournament winnings, is Peter Apathy Jet. Just 22 years old, Justin Boosted J. Smith has substantial success in high-stakes shorthanded ring games. Tom Dwan, or Durr, he plays poker online in the highest stakes regularly against the best in the world. A British-born player who apparently turned $20 into about $4 million. used to be a paper boy, is Andrew Feldman. Former model and tennis player, Patrick Antonius from Finland, is always one of the most dangerous players in any game. Mike Matisau, Mike the Mouth, the Mouth himself. He has three World Series of Poker bracelets and over $7 million in live tournament winnings. And finally in seat eight, it's Phil Ivey. His record speaks for itself. Eight World Series of Poker bracelets, one WPT title, and over $13 million in tournament winnings. Welcome along to the FullTiltPoker.com Million Dollar Cash Game. And when it's a cash game, people can come and go as they please. Chris Ferguson is going to take his pocket aces and his chips, and he's out. And our new player in is this one. It's Andrew Feldman. He is uh, one of many outstanding internet players to storm the poker world. Apparently turned $20 into $4 million. Cool. Phil Ivey has opened this pot for a raise with Ace-3 offsuit. Raise 2600 Feldman with over $600,000 in tournament winnings. It's live tournament winnings. I mean, considering the majority of his play has been online, that's that's not a bad amount of winnings for tournaments, too. He just started playing tournaments, I think, about a year ago. First place has like 4,700 points. This is Feldman's second appearance in the Million Dollar Cash Game. In his first appearance, he won. Don't quote me, but I believe he won about $90,000. Cool. Jack of Clubs, first bet. That Jack, four, right. eight, rainbow. Check. Well, the meta game begins again. Phil Ivy checked. Ziggy bet. Ziggy takes the pot down. Ilari, some sheets. What's up, buddy? I want a pot again. You want a pot? There's hope for me. Sir. Poker being an international game, it's nice to see the international flavor at the table. Got a couple of Finnish players. Got one Brit. We've got a Canadian. A few Americans too, I think, if I remember right. Yeah, a couple of Americans there as well. We've got a Texan in the uh, in the booth. <laughs> Raise two thousand. It's almost like a different country itself. Yeah, I was going to say it is its own country. That's for sure. Spot open. Feel free to leave the union anytime you want, buddy. <laughs> I wasn't a successionist. Oh, well, speaking of succeeding, Ziggy's opened this pot with a pair of twos, and the other side of the spectrum, Justin Smith, wakes up with aces. He's going to try to play a much bigger pot, it looks like. Raise 7,200. Justin Smith's first three bet of the afternoon. Durr, not going to play. Feldman going to pass. Antonius going to pass. And it folds around back to Zygmunt. How much that? I think I start. I think I start with Now it's a question of implied odds. And when I say implied odds, what exactly am I talking about? It's not what you can win right this moment. It's what you might win if you hit your hand. I have like... Uh Started hammering like 50. And uh, to be honest with you, I don't think Justin Smith's deep enough here. He's only got 42 back. 
I think this is a pretty easy fold, but once again, what do I know? Ziggy says, you're wrong, Robert. Fold schmold. Here's the flop. Four, seven, Queen, seven, four, rainbow flop. Check. It's a dream flop for aces, isn't it? Yeah, it's such a dream flop that you almost want to check, but you just can't. There's enough money in there. There's already 16,000 in this pot. But about 8,000. Try to get them in there. They can maybe whatever hand my opponent's holding might be good. But if he bets a big bet, he's certainly going to blow them out. Remember, Justin Smith, three bet, free flop. Would a check on the flop be believable? Hard to believe a check. Absolutely not. But half the pot, 8,000, mm, it could be a continuation bet. That's what I would have bet. 11,300. I think that's a little too much. I don't see how he can get Ziggy to call here. Well, unlike you said, I mean, Zygmunt's going to, he's not going to like almost every flop out there. And he's forced to muck. And Justin Smith wins himself a, a smallish pot, but decent sized. Eight of the best seated at this table. I was just hoping he had Ace King. I heard that pairs are better than Ace King, so that's what I was hoping for. Raise 2,000. Zygmunt going to raise it up with the King Jack suited Kojak. Cool. Duan calls. And if spades come, he's going to be in trouble. <laughs> Queen four of spades versus King Jack of spades. Oh, and speaking of spades, cool. this could be the perfect storm developing. A6 of spades for Mike the Mouth. Here, here comes nine deuce, three of diamonds. Four, yeah, no spades <laughs> out there, not a surprise at all. King seven, four, a couple of clubs. Top pair with Jack kicker for Zygmunt. Check. And Zygmunt's wow. going to play it tricky. Three. Check. It's a pretty coordinated board to be checking. I think we'll see a, a little bet now for sure from Zygmunt. And here is the bet. 7,000. 7,000 from Zygmunt. Wow. Almost a pot-sized bet. Cool. And a call from Tom Duan. Not real sure about that call. Well, I remember Duan had a pair on the flop, but when I checked around, he probably thinks his fours might be good. Ten. Especially Zygmunt. Zygmunt's the type of player, he's betting anything. He bets when he has a little piece of it. Now he has top pair and he checks it. 25,000. But he bet pot size, and this time he bet over the pot. I mean, it's the size of the bet, too. It's not just that he bet. He bet a large bet, and that usually means one or the other. A really good hand or a bluff. I think that's why he's trying to disguise the medium strength of his actual hand and maybe get paid off here. Yeah, if you've watched Zygmunt enough, the one thing about him is that his bet sizing is always a little bit unconventional, very unorthodox. Yeah. He, he confuses his opponents like that. He definitely uh, definitely gets out there and, and doesn't mind dancing, I'll tell you that. And, of course, Duan knows Ziggy so well. I mean, these guys, countless number of hands online. They do have a lot of history together, that's for sure. I think that's going into consideration here. Tom Duan knows that Zygmunt is capable of a bluff in this spot. I don't know why, but I think Tom Duan is going to pay this off. I just got a gut feeling. Cool. He does he call. He does. I thought he was going to pay him off. Wow. Well, Zygmunt, by doing that unconventional check on the flop, made himself an extra $32,000. In all likelihood, if Zygmunt bets that flop, everybody folds and the oh. hand is over. For sure, by playing it tricky, he got the maximum payout. Well, small hit for Tom Duan. He's still our leader, though, up 144,000. Ivy's still up 22,000. But Zygmunt has crawled his way out of the basement. He's only down 72,000. And I say only, but you gotta remember, this guy was down 110,000 just a few moments ago. That's true. I'll tell you what. Mike the Mouth is sitting in the cellar right now. Button in front of Phil Ivey. Durr not going to play. Raise 2,000. And Feldman going to raise it up again. This time he's got a little bit more of a hand. He's got King, Queen of Diamonds. Yeah, and I think Phil Ivey thinks this kid's raising a few too Raise. many pots. 7,000. 
Feldman played a little bit on his back heels last year, and I'm wondering if maybe Ivy remembers that. You know Ivy remembers that. And maybe Ivy's going to take advantage of that. I was going to say, Ivy doesn't forget too much. Yeah. King Queen's not a very good hand to call. Free bet, and he calls. Wow. Well, he's got Phil Ivy dominated, but if he doesn't hit a piece of this flop. 5-5-10. Five, five, well, that's the problem with King Queen. More yeah, often really than not, is. you're going to miss the flop. And even when you hit the flop, you don't know if you're good. So true. So true. Oh, well, this is the longest pause for a check. I, I think we're going to see a check. Be pretty strong leading into a three better. Talk about physical tell sometimes. If a player takes that long to check, what does that usually mean? Well, one of two things. He doesn't have anything or he's got a big hand. Usually it's one or the other in that situation. 11,000. 11, yeah, in my experience, I find that most often when a player takes that long, he, he's trying to take a long time to almost... Hold make you back. think, or yeah. make you think you, I have something. So I'm going to check, and I'm going to think about it. And all he's going to do is check and fold. This is actually an interesting scenario here. With this flop, Andrew Feldman could represent a hand, but I can't see him doing anything but folding right now. And King High doesn't feel like it's the best hand here. It is, but it doesn't feel like it. I mean, it, you're, just, you're playing the hand out of position. You're playing the hand out of position against Phil Ivey. I mean, you talk about position. I asked you earlier, how much does position mean? This is evidence, isn't it? It is very obvious that uh, in all poker, position helps. But in particular, when you're playing against the great players, look at this. Please. Wow. 28,500. Now, this is poker at the next level. Can I re-outplay them, though? Holy moly, I didn't see that coming. Well, I still remember the hand when Ivy got the best of Feldman last year. I remember that hand so well. This Ivy had a nut flush against Feldman's king high flush, and Feldman paid him off. This feels fishy, and I think Phil Ivy might sniff this out. Wow, this is great. This is the thing. Feldman so badly wants to outplay Ivy. Holy cool. moly. And now Feldman could be in trouble unless he hits that turn card and he doesn't. Eight. And now what do you do if you're Feldman? I, you know Ivy what? just called you You know what I do? Race. Pure and simple. I check and get ready to muck my hand or I push all in right now. Check. Feldman only has 64,000 behind. The pot is 72. Well, that's Feldman why checks. stack size, he could shove there and hope that he bluffs Phil Ivey out. I mean, Phil Ivey's completely floating Feldman here. 27,000. Wow. I swear. I love Phil Ivey. I just love no. him. This is great. This is poker at the highest level. Straight out. Feldman so badly wanted to outplay Ivey. So badly. And Ivey knew it. He sure did. He sniffed it out. I think part of it had something to do with his re-raise size, too, was only 17,500. And Ivy takes it down. Feldman mucks the hand. Welcome to the big leagues, buddy. You're playing with the big boys now. Phil Ivy shows him how it's done. You're not a bad poker player there, buddy. I don't care what they say about you. One of these days, Andrew Feldman is going to learn to stop messing around with Phil Ivy. He's down $35,400. Tom Dewan still on top. Matisau, still our big loser, down $85,800. Welcome back to the FullTiltPoker.com Million Dollar Cash Game. Button in front of Zygmunt. Duan first to speak. Feldman going to raise it up. Raise, 2,000. Tilting anyone? Well, he's got sixes. <laughs> well, that's at least a part of the hand. Two sixes. I'm all in. And Mike's oh, all in. Yeah. Well, Mike's only got 14,000. No, no, this is a no-brainer for Mike. Yeah. Just like I said a while ago, he's got the perfect shove reshove stack. How much is that? And uh, he can get paid off with a lot of different things right here. It's on Zygmunt right now, and Zygmunt's got ace queen. He's going to call. 14,100 total. Wow. And that might I save Feldman. Yeah, I think that saved Andrew Feldman. I think it did. You start putting Mike the Mouth on a range of hands, and I think Andrew Feldman probably would have had to call with the sixes. I agree. This is going to save him, though. He's not going to be in there against two players. Or is he? I'm sorry. 
Them Canadians. Didn't know it was on me. Just sitting there thinking about Canada. Yeah. Pondering the motherland. <laughs> wow. 12,000 more. He's only got 62. I think I would shove all in here before I would call. Oh. So they're using Mike's singing donkey against him. And look here. Andrew Feldman has called this preflop. Mike the Mouth, truly one of the characters of the game, but he's got a lot of talent. It's not just the mouth. Three, deuce, nine. Check. Well, top set for Mike the Mouth, so he's going to win the main pot. Oh, there's a couple of runner-runners here still uh, alive. Good point. They're still runner-runners, but I'm going to go on a limb and say Mike Matasau is going to win the main pot, which is going to be $44,000. Now the question is, will there be a side pot? And this is the problem. What do you do now at the sixes? 11,000. Well, I mean, pure and simple, if I've called it pre-flop and I get a flop of deuce three, nine, I'm shipping right here. Especially against 11,000. So you're going to check raise all in. Stack size-wise, I don't think Andrew Feldman has a choice. I mean, the weird thing is there's no side pot before that 11,000. There was no side pot. So you might think, well, why is Zygmunt betting? Zygmunt must have a real hand then, right? Yes and no. It looks to me like he's trying to to isolate Mike Matasso for cheap, 11,000 only. I, I, I feel weakness here. I, I would shove. And Zegman, by the way, has about $220,000 behind. Feldman just did not, just was not deep enough to make this call. I think sometimes, you know, and he's going to oh, let it go now. yeah. He shakes his head in disgust. I think he knows he made the mistake, and he lets it go. The good news is, is I'm in the lead. The bad news is, is how many outs does he have? Hopefully none. I have nothing. Oh, he's got no outs. That's even better. Just no running four or five, and I'll be all right. Mike the Mouth, a commanding lead here. Yeah, he's in Zygmunt good needs here. running cards. <laughs> Your world ain't over yet. Oh, oh and a six on the turn. Eights. Eights. Can we get pocket sixes? But it wouldn't have been enough. No, it would not have been enough. And Mike the Mouth takes that down. Subdued applause. I just moved. That is a donkey. I mean, I move in. The ace queen moves in, and the two sixes over call. It's ten tournaments, ten tournaments, right? We're like even money to cash ones. Really? Is that right? Okay, you got you. Me and him, even money <laughs> <laughs> to our cash. Yeah, you guys are always you folding your way up. into the money, though. Robert, I want to talk to you about short stack play. And that's your, your partner. Because Mike the Mouth, who was down to fourteen thousand four hundred, is back up to forty-four thousand. He maneuvered and dodged, and he did a lot of things with his stack there. Six hundred to play. Odd play here, though. Mike Manasso limping with two aces. Cool. Well, wait a second. We talked about this earlier on. Remember, he limped earlier with the, with like some garbage hands, and he was getting raised off. And you said, "Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna limp with the garbage hands, you gotta limp with your monsters." Uh, occasionally, I said occasionally, <laughs> and I like, especially if somebody else is open raised, he's out of position here. I don't know. You don't like it, huh? Cool. I'm not a big fan of this one. Anyway. No. Well, normally Zygmunt would be the one that would have three bet him, or at least raised it. Nobody did, and now Matasau is gonna have to see this flop four ways. King, queen, queen, deuce, king? rainbow. Unlikely anybody would have a king, queen in their hands. I view a threes. Well, I think if Mike bets here. Bet 1600. He might get paid off by somebody. Probably not. Cool. 16 to play. Phil Ivy with two threes. That's a pretty dangerous board to be giving him credit. Hello, Philly boy. Hey, Mike. You got anything? I'm going to do players. the job myself. Yeah, might as well. Jack, Jack or Brad? Jack. No, just call in one time, I think, see what happens. I well, might get a free card now. That definitely uh, is a scary turn card. That's 3,000. Free to call. And Mike is in check call mode. Yeah, I think that uh, turn card reassured that. Check or I'm not sure if you love that river, though, if you're Mike. I'll give him another chance to swing. I'm looking to check call again. Let Phil swing at it again. Bet 8,000. Well, Mike's already taken longer than I would have taken. To me, this is pure and simple. If he caught a queen, he caught a queen, I pay him off. With the line that Mike took, you're saying, hey, you know what? 
There's no way I can check fold this. Is that what Absolutely you're saying? Absolutely, no. Okay. Because he hasn't represented any strength at all. Phil could be betting just about any part of this board. And matter of fact, he's a favorite to be betting the king, not the queen. If he's got the king, uh, I just got to pay it off. Mm -hmm. Now, I wouldn't raise, which it looks like Mike at first was considering. I wouldn't raise, but I would call this. Absolutely. Hello, Philly. Hey, Mikey. You got anything? I think so. You think so? I hate to hear that. Yeah, Mike, Mike has underrepped his hand. He has to take that into consideration here. I mean, that's a very important factor that he's never exposed the fact that he has what he has, two aces. Wow, I can't believe he's taking this long. He calls. Two pair. Aces up. He hates it, but now he loves it. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Do you see the surprise on Phil Ivey's face? Am I right? Can I beat anything? King. I can beat King Jack. That's all I can beat. Ace King. He's raised Ace King. And just like that, Mike Matisseau's back up to almost 60,000 from being down to 14. And once again, this is not a tournament. Mike the Mouth could have just reached in his pocket and gotten more money, but he decided to kind of <laughs> battle back. You can't lay two to one. You got you, even a donkey can cat lucky in one time. You just said that 175 was fair to lay Phil Ivy. Oh, oh, I see. I yes, got to sweat the both of you. You guys can have me drawing day after. Yeah, this. you're right. He's a better bet to go two to one against you. I, I do agree with you there. That's the problem. I'm thinking about it. I could be drawing dead. I could too. Almost. I could too. No, you can't. You are drawing dead. <laughs> That's scary to think about that. Six hundred. Lay me two to one. Yeah, you could be. Pass. He's right. You could, you, could, you could draw right, six to play. I, I'll take a dollar sixty, but if is that that same guy that's like played one hand pad the whole day and had to cost me a hundred thousand? Make a final table. Race Thanks, Peter. By the way, the guy that's played one hand pad all day long and cost me a hundred thousand. Thanks, Peter. Now We're still friends. Now all right, all right. That's good. I'm glad you're over it now. Oh, I am over it. Okay. I was over it after lunch. Dinner. Actually, it was perfect time for dinner for me, actually. Yeah. I was able to vent. And just like, yeah, yeah, for sure. He never slow plays. Ever. Cool. Was it a good play? It was. Jack, seven jacks. Check for best. Yeah. I saw it right away, man. 3,000. I even said to myself, he's got it. Phil Ivey leading right into this pot. I think Phil Ivey's just simply trying to outplay Andrew Feldman right now, and he's doing a darn good job of it so far. I was going to say simply trying. I don't think a matter of trying. I think he's just doing it. Feldman is definitely in his head. Or vice versa. You're a poker player. What does that look say? It says, what just happened to me? Or what's happening to me? Yeah. And how do you turn it around? When you're in that kind of place where nothing's going your way, how do you change it? Probably he needs to take a walk. Uh, maybe a five-minute, ten-minute break from the table. Kind of gather himself. He's uh, definitely pretty frustrated right now. Tom Dwan still on top of the leaderboard at up 142,000. Our big loser is Sahamis. That's Zygmunt, down $82,900. i got to fill it before it's over with. That won't be our biggest loser. Maybe he will be, but it's going to be a lot bigger figure than that. You're a poet. You didn't know it. <laughs> Nothing to it the way I do it. I can't believe that that, Dur that Tom is that stupid, that he's got Ivy taking him down there golfing like he's his good friend, and all he's taking him down there is to beat him out of his money golfing. When we golfed in the Bahamas, he kept... He kept paying 10000 to re-tee his, hit his yeah. tee shot. <laughs> no, no, no. It was like 1000 and two. And two. We, start, we started off betting like $200 a hole or something like that. And by the end of the match, it was like, he was putting two 80-footers for like. <laughs> there was one time that I like literally just hit it into the water 17 times in a row. At like one, 2K a pop or something. Well, you know, it was just small enough that I was like not that mad at myself for wasting 2000 and then after like 10 of them, I was just angry and wanted to get it right. And then at like 15, I just quit angrily. <laughs> Should go to the driving range. It's cheaper. 600 to play. Feldman takes a peek. Queen 8 suited. Not going to play. Pass. 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 600. Raised to 2,000. Phil Ivey getting into the raising act. We raised to 7,000. At least you haven't played with the guys who are telling you that they should 95 and they should 76. 6,700 uh, more. That hasn't happened so far. Happened to you already? It's happened, happened to me times. like 20 times already. No, if you're Justin Phil, Smith, Phil really if you're paying attention to Zygmunt, Zygmunt hasn't played a hand in a while. But he picks this spot to three bet. Yeah, Ace Jack doesn't look near as strong for Justin Smith. 
in this situation where it's an open raise by Phil Ivey and a re-raise by Zygmunt. Yeah, and sure enough, Justin Smith going to throw away the best hand, and Phil Ivey is as well. And this is going to work. And Zygmunt takes it down. And watch out, Zygmunt getting a handle on this table. And here we are in London. It's a great town, and it's a great town for poker. And some of the best in the world have assembled here. And it's 600 to play. In Covent Garden. There's one of them, Phil Ivey with Queen 10 suited. Queen 10 suited. Flats. Wow, this is a new Phil. Six to play. That's one thing about Phil Ivey. I mean, he's always going to change Pass. gears, mix it up. You never know where he's at. Pass. Pass. Juan folds. Now, Feldman's in the small blind with ace jack off seat. In these first How do you play this? Because yeah. Phil Ivey yeah. and Zygmunt have both limped in. I just limped. Cool. Okay, I was going to say, because if he raises, he's probably going to get both players to call, and he's got to play East Jack off suit out of position. Yeah. I know he doesn't want to do that. Too dangerous. Here's the flop. All hearts, 9 8 3. Feldman with the ace of hearts. Trey 8 9. The best hand right now is actually Zygmunt, I believe. Yes, it a is. A pair of threes. But Feldman's got overs plus the ace of hearts. I can think he, he can play this hand pretty strong, can he? Yeah, and he, he figures to just take this down when he leads out. That's 1,700. I love this bet size in there. A little over half pot. And everybody folds, and Feldman wins another one. You didn't hear that much early on. i got to tell you, I think Feldman's won three and lost three. Unfortunately for him, he's losing the big ones and winning the small ones. And it's 600 to play. Sunny London. It is actually sunny. I <laughs> know. It was a beautiful day. I Pass. saw it on breaks. 600 to play. Pass. I'm from an arid climate, so I must have brought the weather with me. I'll take credit for it, all you Pass. Londoners. I love it here, by the way. It's just like you. A guy from Texas. So humble. Raise to 2,000. 2,000 to call. 2,000 from Dwan. Feldman going to call... 1,700 more. I think that was a button call, not a I like my hand call. Oh, well, he's got position. Off. 14 to play. No, not in. And it looks like we're going to have four players through the flop. I know Mike likes this kind of hand because it's the kind of hand where he can draw to the nuts. Well, there's a lot of dominated hands out here. There's three eights, so if the fourth eight came, we could see some action on this. Nine do seven. Check or bet. Mike the Mouth's going to like this one. He's flopped the nut flush draw. Nobody else really fought much. I mean, Patrick Antonius has an open straight draw. Bet. 6,000. And I guess he likes 6, his open and straight draw. It's a, nice, it's a little semi-bluff. And when I say semi-bluff, help us out. Well, basically, when you're bluffing with, with outs. In other words, he led into this flop cool. because he 6, has a straight draw. Pass. So it's really not a bluff, but it's not a made hand 6, either. All right, now he's, right now he only has 10 high. So he's hoping you take it down. But if he gets called, hey, he's still got outs. That's right. I don't think Feldman's going to call this unless he gets creative. <laughs> no. It would be extremely creative. I don't know. I don't know. We've seen it before from him. Heads up. The mouth versus the fin. Oh, that's a good card for Mikey. Yeah, all Mike with top pair and the nut flush draw. Antonius drawing very thin. Well... Needs now, a jack or a six. It's not a club. With that card there, that might freeze up Patrick Antonius. Oh, wow. And, and Mike Mattiso checks back. Nine. Check or bet. I'm not a fan of that check back. Well, you can't like the river card as well because if Patrick Antonius was betting the nine on the flop, well, now he's got trips. And Patrick Antonius very well could represent that. I mean, if you're Mike the Mouth, because you have clubs... You probably put Antonius on what, a seven or nine, right? Yeah, absolutely. Bet. But you know the only thing here? If he had a nine. 13,000 to call. Feels like to me he might have gone ahead and bet the turn with that much of a coordinated board. Two hearts, two clubs. Going to punish, wants to punish the draws. It's a very tough call for Mike, mainly not just because of the nine threat. He has a weak ace. I mean, his eight kicker plays. But most of the time, his eight kicker isn't going to be good. Yeah, he can only beat a bluff here. It's I mean, Antonius is either betting a bigger ace or, or nine. Mike makes the call, though. I guess we've got it. Oh, you got it. Don't worry. We want it. Great call from the mouth. <laughs> Absolutely great call. Two pairs, aces and nines. Well played by what used to be our shortest stack by far, and he's managed to work his stack right up 
Mike's less than 28,000 loser now. Uh-oh. Let's enjoy it for a second. I'm waiting for somebody to punch that donkey in the face. Join us after the break for more action from the FullTiltPoker.com Million Dollar Cash Game. Welcome back to the FullTiltPoker.com Million Dollar okay, Cash Game. Nice Chinese poker game after this. Real high. Yeah, we're high. high as the sky. We're starting at 11. <laughs> See his 20K. eyes light up. 20K. 20K crisscross. We're, starting, we're, actually, we're dealing the cards tomorrow at 11 I'll play 30K crisscross once. Tomorrow the cards are in the air at 11. So you hear that? Those the cards are in the air at 11 a.m. So I think you should all play as late as you can tonight. And enjoy your Chinese game. 600 to cool. It's pretty sick. Play like 10 hands of it, too. You win? Raised I lost 60, to 1,800. 60? I was ahead like 800, and he won it all back in like two hands. And... So I think Pass. I'm going to quit. 1,800 to play. I think I was ahead like 20 something points or something. So I lost it all back. Two hands. So I had like, I don't know, 27 oh, 20 points. points. Uh, 1,800 to play. Oh, <laughs> it's party oh. time for the mouth. Where's that donkey now? Yeah. Race to 6,600. Come on, Texan. What are those? Those are the Cowboys, right? They're the Cowboys, and Mike's trying to spur them on. 6,300 more. Mike, three bets up to 6,600. Ivy gets out of the way. I think the only thing that might save Peter Jetton here is that Mike the mouth has been playing so tight. Now, oh. this, this one's a little bit different. 4,800 more. The Mike the Mouth is such a tight player. Can Jen fold jacks? It's so hard to fold these pre-flop. Do you have any blacks, Mike? You might want to see at least the flop. But at the same time, Mike the Mouth has been playing extremely tight. So I got a feeling we're going to see Peter Jetton Jett this hand. He might even four bet here. I think he thinks he's got the best hand. I don't like it. I wouldn't do it. I would either fold or flat. No, any flats. Jetton's going to flat, and the only thing, if you're flatting, if you are going to call pre-flop, you are going to flat, so to speak, you better have a plan on the flop if all babies come out there. Queen, Queen eight, eight, three. Check or bet. Rainbow. Mm -hmm. Mattisau still in command with his kings. Check. Oh, now that might actually Oops. really hurt Peter Jetton because Mike the Mouth slow playing his two kings. It feels like the two jacks are good now. I, I might even lead here. Check, hold that. And check, check. Wow. Mike just content to win check what's in there? I mean, it's okay to have pot control, but this is ridiculous. I mean, he's not making any money off this hand. He should have bet the turn for sure. Now he might not be able to bet the river because there's three diamonds on the board. He's got to bet this, though. Pot's nearly 15,000. I don't think he's going to get the chance to bet it. I think he's going to have to call now, which I think he'll do in a very quick manner. Well, he's induced his bluff. I mean, it's actually not a bluff. I think Jenton thinks he has the best hand. I call. Bet 11,000. I thought queen. he had queens. He I thought he had queens. And Mattisau snap calls, shows his two black okay. kings. Nice hand. Probably got my stack of a jack coming. Sorry? I put you on. I was sure you had queens in my head. Wow. And look at this for Mike the Mouth. Mike the Mouth is now up $200. What a <laughs> turnaround for the mouth. Wow. What a great recovery by Mike Mattisau. Hey, you got to give him credit. I don't know if anybody's played better at this table. Let's say it again. But, uh, can Mike, can we bet 1000 Yeah, yeah. I got red. Yeah. Well, I'm running good, man. Dude, don't put pulling against my boy Phil. <laughs> well, I'm not, whatever Phil's side is, I'm even going to no, bet No, no, no. You're not betting. Please don't bet. <laughs> Please. Can you do me a favor? So I'll bet 150 on this. Mike, I'll bet 1,000 on them. No, I'm going to bet 1,000 on them. You can bet 1,000 on them. Yeah. 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 You'll yeah. yeah. bet 1,000 on them. You bet 1,000 on them. Me and you have a bet. Yeah, yeah. me and you have a bet. No, I'm not paying it back, but can you just bet me for just for me? Please. I'm not going to bet anything. Okay. Still thinks it's going to Thank you. jinx them. I mean, I turned like $400 in the 120,000. He thinks I'm jinxing. Let me look. Let me look. Ivy anxiously waiting for Mattis to fold. Bet me small. Small. I have one of each here. So what side do you have? I'll, bet, I'll, I'll take red. I, ha I have a red. No, you don't take red. I have red. <laughs> Mike obliges. I'll take. But you know what? Red, red is coming. Yeah. Anyways, I'll take. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's already there. 
Ivy with Queen 7. Isn't that the computer hand? It is technically computer hand, meaning that it is the average hand. Now Ivy's not going to play the average hand. Uh, earlier he called a raise with the average hand. Boosted Jay, Justin Smith, the 22-year-old, not going to play his button. Well, and it's a battle of the blinds. Dwan versus Feldman. My donkey wants to know if y'all feel like you got cheated when I was down to 10,000 in the year break. To 2,000? Tom Juan, ever the aggressor in a little blind with, oh, uh, of course, Queen 5 <laughs> offsuit. That's the old Tom Juan. He's back. Well, it's got added value. He's got two flush draws, right? That's the way I always look at it. Oh, and what a flop for Andrew Feldman. Juan with top pair. Feldman flops the wheel. Wow. Now, normally you wouldn't think a big pot would develop, but this is blind on blind action. Sometimes strange things can happen when it's blind on blind. Agreed. Agreed. I think I just lost 50,000 on this flip. 3,400. Dwan bets. How do you play it if you're Feldman? Well, first of all, I don't look back at my hand. Uh, you don't want to expose this. You flopped a wheel. It's the second best hand in the world. You know what I do if I'm Feldman? I raise right here. Not a big raise, but I raise. I want to get Dwan tied into this pot. In case a scare card comes on the turn, I, I, I wanted him to put some money in here right here, right now. Right. If an ace, a six, a four, if any of those cards were to come off, that would definitely scare Dwan. And to be honest, any over card would really scare Dwan, short of a queen. <laughs> cool. Well, he didn't agree with my strategy, but I think he should have played it that way. Nine. Nine of hearts on the turn. Now, queen or five on the turn would have really been devastating for Durr. I think if Durr bets out here, we'll hear from Feldman. Pot 11-6, dare to speak. Durr looking for any kind of read. Oh yeah, see, Durr still thinks he has the best hand. It's funny, most live players will actually watch their opponent as they bet. Feldman did not. Bet 8,800. And that in itself is a little bit of a tell. He's not interested in what Dwan has because he has the nuts. He knows he's got him. You know, actually, in the big picture of traps, Andrew Feldman might just flat call again because he's almost guaranteed, if it comes a blank, for Tom Dwan to lead again. Personally, I like to make a raise here. I like to make it about 25000 to go. See, I agreed with you on the flop. I would have raised in the flop. Once I call the flop, if I took Feldman's line and I called the flop, I'd probably just smooth call here again. Raise to 27,600. That's about what I said, 25, 26,000. Yep, I like it so far. I mean, he very well could get called here. That's a fairly decent size raise, almost 20,000 more. Now let's look at this hand from Duan's perspective. Can you continue? You're out of position with queen five. Now you raised, your opponent called. You've hit top pair, you've let out on the flop and the turn, and now you've been raised. What do you do? I, I'm starting to feel like I don't have the best hand right now. If I, <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, the guy flats me on the on the flop and then raises me when the nine comes on the turn. I, I, it doesn't feel like a hand, what hand could he have that had a nine in it? Then call the flop. I mean, the only hand I'm trying to invent that maybe he could have something like a six, seven of hearts where he called with a gut shot and now he's picked up a double gutter and a heart draw, something like that. That is definitely. But I'm inventing a hand. That's definitely. That's probably about the only one I can see. Six, seven of hearts. Dwan calls. Oh, wow. That. Cool. Well, a queen or a five on the river here, we could see thunder and lightning strike. Nah, that's not the card you want to see, though. The eight of diamonds. Check. Check or bet. Well, we're definitely going to see a bet from Andrew Feldman. It's a matter of what size bet we're going to see. How much would you bet? Pot 66.8. You know what? I, I, I like to bet about 40 or 45. I mean, just enough where it looks like I'm trying to blow him off the hand. He could even push all in with 76,000. I love this pause by Andrew Feldman. Hands are shaking. Well, I tell you, if he goes for the payoff... He's going to bet about 35000 If he wants to get paid off. 47000 
might be a little too much to get paid off here. But Tom Dwan is capable of making these kind of calls. But unfortunately, he'll be wrong. Hero call hasn't worked real well today for anyone. Crowd is watching every move right now. They're on their feet. At least a couple of them are. 47,000 back to Dwan. The pot is 113.8. Duan's done everything right until this hand. A tough position for Tom Duan. He's gone with his instincts on the flop and on the turn. Now, another 47,000 worth of instinct on the line. If you call the turn, yeah, you can just you about, follow the river? You know what? I, I don't think you can. I think if you call the turn, he well. He holds it. Great instincts by him. He made, the, he made that call turn. And I thought he might call here. But his instincts tell him that he's beat. He folds, and he saves himself $47,000. He's still our big winner today. Yeah, I, I think Andrew Feldman bet a little too much there on that river card. Duan still up nearly $120,000. Ivy up over $51,000. Mike Matisau. <laughs> yes, Mike the Mouth. And he's he was on a life support earlier. He is now up 8000 And Andrew Feldman, he climbs back. He's still down 6700 but he'll take that after his early misstep. Our big loser is Zygmunt. He is down $110,000. That's it for day one. Join us after the break for more high-stakes action from the FullTiltPoker.com Million Dollar Cash Game. We're into the second day of the FullTiltPoker.com Million Dollar Cash Game. I'm David Tuckman. Joining me in the booth today is World Series of Poker bracelet holder and Texan character. It's Robert Williamson III. Two new players join the action. One is only 21 years old. She's Norwegian superstar, Annette Oberstad. She shocked the poker world when she won the World Series of Poker Europe as an 18-year-old. Our other player, Frenchman, well-known in the poker world, David Benjamin. He has one World Series of Poker bracelet to his name. Was once a professional tennis player, but now he makes millions on a different green surface. I spoke with Annette before today's action, and she expressed concern while she's a superstar in the tournaments. She feels like she's a bit of an underdog against this field. She is a great cash game player, but she's playing against incredibly talented other cash game players. She's probably not in her comfort zone in this lineup. I have a feeling with the stack sizes being what they are, I think if they were deeper right now, she would be at a big disadvantage. I actually don't mind her playing more of a tournament philosophy in a cash game when she has a smaller amount of big blinds in front of her. Uh, straddle's on for 1,200. We've got another straddle here. Once again, blinds are 300, 600, or 100 ante with a 1,200 straddle. What exactly is going on with this? The straddle is when basically the person sitting to the left of the big blind decides to put double that amount on there, but they also get last action. So it's not a complete gamble because you get last action, which is definitely a big advantage pre-flop. Well, I'll tell you right now, they came here to gamble. They're ready to gamble. Raise to 3,500. We've got some big hands developing here. Annette Oberstad is going to raise it up. Straddle. She raises it up with ace-queen. Benjamin right behind her with two Bob nines. Now, if we were eight-handed, you might not see as many chips go in. But six-handed, these are monsters. We raise to 11,200. It's 10,900 more. We've got a raise from Oberstad to 3,500. Benjamin has three bet up to 11,200. Yeah, I don't think Annette can possibly get away from this pre-flop. How much more? Uh, it's 11,200 in total. 7,700 to call. Now, I assume if she decides to four bet, she's pot committing herself. That she's not going to fold then. No, she won't. If she makes the initial mistake, which isn't a mistake, it's a coin toss. But if she makes the initial mistake, she'll follow through with it. I know Annette's played a, a very well. I played a lot of hours with her. Well, she decides to call. And then two newcomers waste no time getting involved. Patrick Antonia smiling as he joins in the game. He's going to watch this hand, though, and here's the flop. Well, Queen 5-5. Five, five. Good flop for Oberstad. And you know why it's even better flop? There's only one overcard to the nines. She might get paid off. Oberstad checks over to Benjamin. I got a good feeling for Annette here that... Uh, 
It's going to be hard for David Bennyman not to lose some chips in this pot. And he has to bet a decent bet here. He has to bet at least like 15,000, 13, 14, 15,000 as a continuation bet. So uh, I think Annette's going to have a good feel for where she's at in this hand. Now, these players bought in for $100,000, but after a bet, a three bet, and now a bet on the flop, they're almost going to be all in soon. Bets. You need to take long. 13,800. No. 13,800 from Benjamin. I think if Annette were to push shove right now, she might be able to get paid off. If she just flat raises, maybe not. But it could look like she's on a diamond draw, and she could get possibly called and double up on the right off the bat entering the game. She's trying to decide right now, what's my proper reaction to this action? I think she knows or believes that she has the best hand. Cool. And she decides to call. Pot now $52,700. Benjamin Oberstad. Well, the only problem with this hand is now it, Annette could get unlucky and a nine comes. Or a king. Deuce. Check or bet? Well, I'm talking about scare cards here. Come on. If you think your opponent might have an overpair, I Deuce think she's trapped turn. more than anything. And Oberstad now has a flush draw as well. Oberstad checks one more time. She has top pair, top kicker with the flush draw. Well, this is the moment of truth for David Benjamin. Does he believe Annette's on a flush draw? If he does, if he believes she really has a flush draw here, he's got to bet again. And then she gets his entire stack, or she lays it down if she believes David Benjamin has kings or aces, like an overpair. Especially if he pushes all in here. It's a slight time and a half to pot all in. would be, uh, be a tough call for Annette. It's actually an awkward stack size for David Benjamin as well, meaning that he can't really afford... Bets. Benjamin, big bet here from Benjamin. 20,200. 20,200. He's left a little over 50,000 behind. 20,200 to call. I think that's more because if Annette is to race, he can get away from the hand here. This actually looks like a value bet. It may scare Annette even more. I would say that she's either shoving or folding. I don't I don't think we'll see in between. There's no way she's folding. No, I don't think she's planning to fold either. I feel pretty positive she's going to go ahead and take a chance. If she's against an overpair, she has outs. She's got the nut flush draw with top pair, top kicker. No chance she folds. Cool. Wow, a little she surprise. Calls. She just flats there. That seems a little awkward. Pot is now $93,100 to the river. Oh, now I'll tell you what. Check or bet. That's a terrible river for both players. This might freeze the action up. Check. Check. It goes check, check, and Overstad's going to win a huge pot. The 21 Norwegian okay. takes in $93,100. It's a great start for her. It's got to feel good. I know she went into this table. She was a little bit scared. She felt maybe some of the players at this table had a little bit more cash game experience than she did. It's got to feel good to get that first big pot under, under, your your, uh, under your belt. Well, this is one of those situations where she's right to be afraid. How much do you think I'm ahead of you, seriously, lifetime? On the poker, maybe six. Six million? Come on. Huh? I still have some money. They said you said he's up six million on pro poker on you. So I was, I was, oh, he said I'm up. But oh, you're up six million. That's what he says. I don't, I don't see how, but I'm sure he's... Probably off by only about. Raise to 3,500. That's what he claims. What about the golf? How, how am I doing in that? Let's hear, let's hear this fantasy of yours. You really want to talk about it here? No. Cool. National TV. With this lineup, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a lot of straddling. Once again, this time, Benny means straddles. Feldman raises Race. to 3,500 with the 10 9. Patrick Antonius calls. 11,500 now. Mattisau doesn't believe it. He is going to three bet this to 11,500, and this 11, pot is ballooning up. Pass. Remember, the blinds are 300, 600, the $1,200 straddle. You've got a raise in first position from Feldman, a call from Patrick Antonius, and I think a lot of dead money out there. Mattisau thought it was the perfect opportunity to squeeze. 8,000 more to call. 
he couldn't help himself. I'll tell you what, a squeeze play is probably the right play here, but not as squeezing with the best hand. Squeeze play is where another player has opened the pot, especially if there's some dead money out there, you get a caller or two. And then the last player to act, they make a re-raise to try to win the pot. Well, the action is on Andrew Feldman. He's deciding what to do. How are you guys doing? And while he's deciding, none other than Tom Dwan, our big winner so far, has joined the table. Did you just wake up? Hour ago or so, half an hour ago, something like that. Oh, Tom well. He's got his cup of coffee and he's ready to play. All of them should be drinking coffee. I think they were all playing way all into the night last night. Wow, shocking. Poker players <laughs> playing poker way into the night? 8,000 to call. And the play is going to work by Matisau. Feldman folds. Antonius gets out of the way. And Matisau, who uh, way back when was down to about $14,000, did not rebuy. Interestingly enough. But he's up over 112000 He's developed a tight image. His image alone got him that money right there. The Million Dollar Cash Game leaderboard. These are the players in the game. Duan, our big leader overall. He's up over $118,000. Zygmunt and Patrick Antonius, our big losers combined. They're down nearly $200,000. Mike Madison now up $25,100. Doesn't seem like that big a win <laughs> until you start thinking, wow, he was down $86,000. I think he had ace five. Started, you, no, you got a $10,000 bet, so he didn't have ace five. And you get the rest. What's that? I get the rest. He, get any ace, he, gets, he has any ace rag you want. Antonius on the button, Ivy in the big blind. Ooh, pass. 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 Or you can bet less, too. I'm, I'm, you don't have to bet 10000 no, That doesn't seem a good bet in my favor. Well, you can bet small. You can bet like a dime. For the dime, I'm going to lose on that other bet. <laughs> Action on the Brit. It's Feldman. You're convinced that I'm going to win that? I think you are now. Well, this would normally seem like a great spot to try to make a steal, nice. but I feel like we see the big blind here. I don't like it. Play. Cool. Any race? I will. Probably. Probably. Nope. No race. No. Nah, for, for you, Friendly? You, you look a little funny there, my friend. I always look funny. 10-4 queen. Queen, 10-4. A couple of diamonds. Bet 2,000. Matisau, top pair, and he's going to bet 2,000. Ivy calls. Ivy decides to float this flop. Queen. Wow, Check he can float all day now. Matisau's got three queens. Bet 4,000. Four to call. Okay, this is a question for me. Matisau's going to bet on the 4,000. Would you ever check if you're Matisau knowing that Ivy's probably floating? I would absolutely. When that turn card comes right there, I go ahead and check. I'll give an aggressive player like Phil Ivy a chance to hang themselves. We've got to give him a little rope. I mean, although it is a, it is a draw-heavy board, I mean, there are two diamonds out there. There are straight draws out there. Maybe you're scared if, if well, there, there a is diamond, a, an eight, a king were to come up. But you there, can't play scared poker. I don't want to beat you. You got a, big a lot hand of money. There. I made a big, big lay down. Big flop. Big draw. I had a ten. Yeah, that was good. That was good. My ten was good. Was it good or no? What do you It think? wasn't a good ten. A lot of tennis players in the game. Seems so odd. Patrick Antonius was a former tennis player. I know Gus Hansen was a tennis player. David Benny made a tennis player. What is it with athletes that turn to poker players? I think that being an athlete and being competitive gives you that drive, that mental urge yeah, to win. Like and it carries over on the green felt just as well as it does on the court. So, Robert, what, what sport did you play? Um, I was actually an all-state basketball player, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. Looking at me now, you look like I'm hiding basketballs. 600 to pull. Race to 1,900. This time Ziggin picks up a real hand. He's got the snowmen. Oberstad with 10-9. For people living in warmer climates, snowmen referring to the two eights in his hand. Cool. Oberstad calls, and Benjamin picks up another big hand in the blinds, this time ace-queen. 74. I suspect we'll see at least a three bet here. We race to 7,400. And sure enough, there's another three bet. We just saw this. It's like deja vu. <laughs> this time, instead of the four bet, you got the raise from Zygmunt, the call from Annette, and a three bet from David Benjamin. 7,400 total. This time, though, I'm not sure if Zygmunt's going to fold so quickly. No, matter of fact, he, he might actually consider a re-raise here in this spot. Well, I guess he's considering the call. Cool. 7,400 total. Maybe 60. 
Does Hickman calls, and is that going to bring in Overstad now? It very well could, and that's checking out the stack size of David Benjamin. Uh, she's getting a little bit more than 3-1 to one on the call, plus implied odds. By the way, implied odds. Well, basically, in a nutshell, when you have the right implied odds, it means it's not what you can win right here on this hand. It's how much can you win on later streets, how much in the overall pot you can win in this hand. Right, if you hit your hand, how much you can potentially win. Flop 10, 4, 3, 2 clubs. Annette would have made top pair, but she folded. Sigmund with the best of it right now with the snowmen. Annette, Benjamin's got the betting lead. He was the pre-flop aggressor. He's got the whip, especially with... Uh, one over card, but I'll tell you right now, Zygmunt's not the kind of player with only one card out there to not make this call if David Benjamin does lead this flop. I think Zygmunt would definitely call here. Pot 18,000. Benjamin's going to check. Check or bet? I think it's a smart check by David Benjamin. He's not really running up the white flag. He's not saying, I surrender. But at the same time, he's saying, okay, that's a disjointed flop. There's a good chance that he knows I'm on big cards. But that might not have fit my hand. Check. I actually like this, especially against the aggressive Finnish player. Ten. And a check, check. Turn is another 10. And that's now kicking herself. That would have been trip 10s for her. Especially with the uh, check, check flop. It would have been a very, very good turn card for Annette Oberstad's hand. Well, now it wouldn't make any sense to me if David Benjamin led this pot here on the turn. Bet, 9,000. I'm really surprised. It's not telling a very consistent story. So many times in poker, it's the story that you tell. Well, is there a chance that he thinks he has the best hand? I mean, is there a chance? I mean, remember, Zygmunt, who sometimes will call lightly, is there a chance that Zygmunt's got King Jack? Well, here's the problem. By leading this turn card, even if he thinks he has the best hand right here, he can only be called by hand. That beats him. Cool. And uh, Zygmunt does call, and you're right. Oh. You can only beat him. Well, that was bingo. Check. Now, Zygmunt, if he wasn't sure if he was ahead before, he's pretty sure now. Check. Check or bet. He's got to make a real odd bet to get paid off here. It's got to basically overbet over the pot. Overbet or drastically value bet. Yeah, we've seen this from Zygmunt, though. We've seen like, the overbet. Like 12,000, like a third of the pot. He's got to do one or the other to get this hand paid off. But I would think, knowing how Zygmunt plays, we're more likely to see it. Bet 100,000. <laughs> we're more likely to see an overbet. We knew it. You wow. knew it was coming. You well, knew the overbet was coming. And Zygmunt does this with his bluffs. He does this with his made hands. It's one of the reasons he's so dangerous. Speaking of overbets, there was 36,000 in this pot. Now there's 136,000. Wow. Of course, David Bayman only has 43,000 left. I, I like it from Zygmunt's side of the felt. Right, effectively the bet's only 43,000. That's correct. But it just looks so odd, because most players go, you know, if you had a made hand, wouldn't you want to get paid off? That's the conventional thinking. Zygmunt goes the other way around, and he goes, you know what, that's what you're thinking, so I'm going to do this instead. Yep, he's definitely an unconventional player, but I'll tell you what, his style of play works. He could d definitely be on a broken flush draw right here. He could, he could have a club draw. David Benjamin might try to make a hero call here. He could have six high. He could have five, six. I mean, you think of all the hands he could have right now. Easily, easily could be on a, on a bluff. I, I think there's actually over 50% chance that David Benjamin's going to pay this off. And I can't say that if I'm David Benjamin that I fault him exactly. It's kind of a tough spot. I bet David Benjamin wishes he didn't make that turn bet because the turn bet is what's really got him in a perplexed state right now. Ivy watching on. There's the call. Yep. There's the call I from Benjamin. He, I thought he might get paid off here, and he does. House. And I think Benjamin knew it. Benjamin said, you know what, you've got a monster or you got nothing at all. It had to be one or the other. Yeah. I don't I can't really fault David Benjamin for that. Huge pot. And it goes to Zygmunt, 122,800. Nice son. Thanks. And Benjamin's gonna have to rebuy. He has been felted. And he makes the signal. And is that for one hundred thousand or one million? <laughs> you never know with David Benjamin. Yeah, with this crowd you never know. David Benjamin down 100,000. Patrick Antonius down 93.8. Oberstad 
up 30,000. Our big winner, Tom Dwan, up 106,000. Zygmunt, still down 48,000. But remember, at one point, he was down 110,000. And we talked about it earlier. He's really starting to get a feel for this table now. He's going to take swings. His style of play is going to cause swings for himself and whoever's playing a pot against him. He's an uber-aggressive opponent, and uh, his style of play fits this game very well. Welcome back to the FullTiltPoker.com Million Dollar Cash Game. Benjamin, Ivy, Antonius, Oberstad, Zygmunt, Dwan. Benjamin down $100,000. He has rebought for another 100000 Raise 2000 We get a raise from Antonius with six deuce. Zygmunt's going to call with the nines. Cool. And we're starting to get some bigger, deeper stacks at this table. Zygmunt with a quarter million. Duan with over 200000 Cool. Ivy with 164000 well, it's as we suspected, this game would play bigger and bigger, and it's starting to already. It's getting there. Deuce, Jack. Four-handed. Jack, four, deuce, rainbow. Open and straight draw for Tom Duan. Check. Bottom pair for Patrick Antonius. Nines right now are ahead. 6,000. Cool. Yeah, I suspect we will see a call here from Tom Duan, an open and straight draw. Yeah, he'd like to see at least one club out there, but even without the club, it's a rainbow board, and he's got to draw to the nuts. Well, plus, he's already got another caller, so he's getting, you know, good pot odds. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, he's getting more than 3-1, to one, and we talked about implied odds already, so he's getting more than 3-1 to one already, plus implied odds. That's correct. He's also got to think in a raised pot. If he were to hit his hand with an ace, there's a good yeah. chance maybe the ace hits somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. So if he hits one end of his hand... It's a good chance he's going to get paid off right. in his mind. Right. Obviously, we can see that nobody has an ace. Now, there's one way to play this hand by calling. The other way... 21-6. 21,600. Is by raising. It's a strong semi-bluff. <laughs> and do you like it? You know, against these other two opponents, I don't mind it at all. Patrick Antonius is so aggressive. Zygmunt, Puff. so aggressive. I like it. I like it. Fight aggression with aggression. You know, it's funny. Against... Players that are a little bit more predictable, like a Mattisau or a Chris Ferguson, sometimes you want to make that call because if you make that call, if you hit your hand, your opponent's actually more likely to have something that will pay you off. In this case, though, these guys don't necessarily have anything, and we can see that Antonius only had six deuce. Well, in addition to that, Zygmunt makes this call. He's the kind of player that can make these type of calls. So, six. Oh, but that was gin for Tom Dwan. By the way, if Antonius had made that call, if Tom Dwan had just smooth called that and not made the raise, Antonius yeah, would have had two pair. Yeah, he could have won a really big pot here. Could have been a monster. Of course, there's already 58,000 plus in this pot, so I guess it's already a pretty big pot. Yeah, it is. This is actually a spot where I might check, hoping that Zygmunt would lead here. Knowing Tom Dwan, though, not much of a checker. I think he's going to lead at this pot. 35K, probably. Strong semi-bluff from Tom Dwan. And when you're semi-bluffing, you're kind of hoping you're going to take it down right then and there. But if you don't take it down, you've still got outs. He's hit one of his outs. Check. Oh, and he does check it. I like it. I like it a lot. Even though I think we'll see Zygmunt check back to him, it could lead to a payoff on the river. Dwan almost makes it look like he was making a move. And now once he gets called, he's shutting down. Absolutely. So I tricky. Like I like it. it looks like he's oh, still get... the ever-aggressive Zygmunt. Wow, he's reaching for chips. Well, right now, Zygmunt's thinking about betting to protect his hand. He thinks the nines are good. He really does believe he has the best hand. Interesting play here. Zygmunt going to bet. 39,000. 39,000. From Zygmunt. He's well, easy gonna. come for easy go. <laughs> because we can see that Zygmunt has 0% chance of winning this pot. Action back to Dwan. Pot nearly $100,000 already. I mean, the dramatic pause by Tom Dwan is, how much can I get paid off? How can I get more money, extract more money from Zygmunt?
going with the nuts, trying to figure out how to get paid. Come on. Duan's all in. All in. Duan's all in. And Zygmunt Toss. tosses it away. Quickly folds. Duan must have really thought Zygmunt had a big hand. He did. He, he thought he had top pair. Minimum. You play good, man. Very good. I'm going to think for a second so I can set a fair line. When a poker player starts talking about setting a fair line, it scares me every time. Toss. Really wants to get the best of it. Raise, 2,000. Antonius makes the raise with 10 8 of clubs. Gap suited connector. Pass. Over to Overstad. Dollar 35. Who? You guys. Overstad, the youngest World Series of Poker bracelet winner at 18 years old. No way. You agree you should be lame, right? Matter of fact, she couldn't even play in the World Series of Poker in. Las Vegas because it's 21 to play there. A dollar fifteen. Six thousand five hundred is more on the ball. Dollar and a re-raise from a net uh, Overstad with King Eight of Diamonds. Yeah, That's a position it. raise there. I, didn't, I thought dollar fifteen was pretty close to the price. I think I don't think it's that far off. I think it's you know about twenty cents off. Maybe nineteen. You know, gotta so get you're that saying dollar thirty-five value. is the right price that you're saying. Maybe dollar thirty-four, but I want to make a cent of oh, value. Come on, so, you're trying to steal yeah. from us, man. <laughs> trying to steal from us. <laughs> Three king four. An interesting flop here. Top pair for Annette Overstad and a flush draw Check. for Patrick Antonius. Pot just under fifteen thousand dollars. I think that's pretty fair. What do you think the fair what price is for lend? you and you, Mikey? You against the net. dollar or ten? I'm dollar ten? Dollar five? Net. I'm gonna take a net against you. No, you're, you're a favorite. That. Against me. Yeah. What are you gonna? Don't look at me like that. You're, you're a favorite. You're, you're out of line. You're out of, that look was out of line. <laughs> you are Nine thousand bet from Overstad. Annette, what would you do you like? play PLO? Oh, she's in hand. She doesn't. She doesn't play PLO? Yeah. A little bit, but not much. There you go. She saved me. A little awkward for Patrick Antonius here because if he just flats, it looks like he's on a drawing hand and may not get paid off. I think he almost needs to fold a raise here. I know that sounds strange because he obviously has 10 high, but... How much? 9,000. I think he's considering those two options. I'd be surprised if he just flats. Well, the check raise here would be a semi-bluff, obviously. He'd be bluffing with a drawing hand. Yeah, if he makes it about 25,000 to play, it feels like, unless Annette has a really big hand, he might get her to lay this down. I mean, she doesn't have much of a kicker, so if he does raise, and it looks like he's cutting out chips to make a raise. Yeah, Patrick Antonius' style of play is to re-raise right here. I mean, if he raises here, if he does the check raise, Oberstock can only beat a bluff. Yeah, and I don't think we'll see a call. I mean, honestly, that's why it's such a great play. Sometimes these semi-bluffs are really strong plays because you're actually on a drawing hand. Raise, 27,000. Just like that, 27,000 to go. Well, 27,000, it's 18 more back this is to Overstad. A really tough call for a net Overstad. I mean, if she's against another made hand, her hand's probably not good. If she's against a draw, he could still get there. I don't think she can call here. What's he going to bet on the turn? You know, that's what has to go through your mind. It's not just calling the flop. She might have to face a big bet on the turn as well. How much does he have about? Well, she wants to get a count. She wants to know how much Antonio says behind. And Antonius has 61,000. She hasn't covered, so she's, that's what she's figuring out. If I call this, it could be 61,000 more. I mean, is there anything wrong with her calling here and seeing how it develops on the turn? I mean, she is in position. It's an awkward stack position for her, not because of her stack size, because Patrick Antonius isn't deep enough where if he was to move all in on the turn or make a substantial bet, if she calls, she, she's almost guaranteed to have to call more on the turn. So I, I really favor a fold here, even though she does have the best hand. You know, I'm just thinking it's... Or she could push all in here. That's her other two options. Action on a net. Antonius has check raised here to 27,000, and it's 18,000 back to Oberstad. I think she's actually honestly considering pushing on him. There's no call in her range. It's push all in or fold. 
A net a two to one favorite if it goes to showdown. You can see the percentages, but that means nothing. She's got to get the showdown. Well, then I I'm all in. And she's all in. Call. Cool. Cool. Call. all in. Antonius calls. Wow. I have one pair. That's good. Call. Ace of spades does nothing. A club and only a club on the river huh? will save Antonius. Oh, they don't use it? Oh, okay. Sorry. What do you mean? Here's the river. It's a five of diamonds, and Annette Overstud has felted Patrick Antonius. Pot $190,000. Well played, well thought out, and a nice win there for Annette Overstud. Gotta love it when two great players tangle like that. The, the metagame, the mental side, and she knew there was a good chance he was on a draw. And she made the call. Actually made the raise. Uh. Oh. Was Mac so even in that hand? Mike the Mouth pouring some salt on the wound. Patrick Antonius now down $200,000. Tom Dwan up 179.5. Annette Overstad, the 21-year-old. She came to this table a little intimidated. She thought she might be a little out of her league. Out of her league? She's up <laughs> nearly $150,000. No, one thing she might be out of, she might be out the door. Mike Matasau has gone from zero to hero after fighting his way back up our leaderboard to earn himself a tidy profit. No such luck for Patrick Antonius, who's our big loser so far. The Finn is down $200,000 after being felted by newcomer Annette Oberstad. Tom Dwan is still way out in front, but with a world-class field eyeing up his chips, how long will that last? Catch us next time on the Full Tilt Polka.com Million Dollar Cash Game.